Caesar, my God, are countless and exceedingly plenteous. I your compassions. All the raindrops are counted by you, and the sand of the sea is before your eyes. How much more are there? So my priest asked me to pray the other day, and I did it, and now I feel really happy that I did. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'll give you my thoughts by the end of this diary today. Yesterday I spoke with Paul Gavriluk about the Ladder of Divine Ascent and this idea that the Christian life is about progressing, about struggling to move further up towards the ideal of being Christ-like and living in Christ. But one of the ways that we sometimes fall off the ladder, that we cease to progress or even go backwards, is we misunderstand the goal of the things that we are doing. I'm talking here about a very subtle difference, the difference between appearing to be good and actually being good, and therefore the difference between working to improve your image as opposed to working to improve your substance, who you really are. John Paul Sartre, the philosopher, coined this term, being for others. Let me explain what he means by this. Imagine you're sitting in a park um, and you're uh, singing your favorite song or hymn. And there's no one around you, so you're just singing happily out loud. And then suddenly you see out of the corner of your eye that there's someone who's walking down the path and coming close to you. What happens to you now? Do you keep singing? Most of us, I think, would start to feel a little bit self-conscious. We'd start to ask ourselves questions, just automatically, not voluntarily. We'd ask ourselves, how is that person going to see me? What are they going to think of my voice? Am I disturbing them? Am I offending them? Maybe they're coming to mug me. Ah, there's nobody else in the park. Should I look for somebody else? You see how everything has changed just by that other person coming into my sphere of the environment. Um, my emotions have changed. My thoughts have changed. My actions might change. I might actually lower my voice or even stop singing altogether un until they're gone. This is the idea of being for others. This idea that we often consciously or subconsciously have in our minds the, the presence of another person and we change how we think and feel and act and speak in order to try and fit in with what we think that other person expects of us. Now, there's a good side and a bad side to this. Uh, on the good side, it can motivate me to be a better person, particularly if I'm around people who are also trying to do the right thing. It can tweak my conscience. It can make me feel that, you know, something that I thought was okay, well, since other people don't accept it, then maybe it's not okay. And I can think that about that a little bit more carefully. It also makes it possible for me to connect with other people. If I can put myself in the place of another person, then I can feel genuine empathy with that person. Uh, and that's going to bring us together. So being with other people connects us and helps us to grow together. And that's probably why your priest told you to pray, right? He's trying to have a good influence and nudge you in the right direction. But there are also dangers to this being for others. Because I can fall into the trap of focusing more on what the other people think of me rather than what I really am. Now, being good and appearing good often do go together, but not all the time. Remember the fig tree that Jesus cursed outside of Jerusalem. What was the problem with the fig tree? The two didn't go together. It had lots of leaves, so it appeared to be fruitful, but when you actually went up there and looked behind the leaves, there were no fruits. So the substance wasn't there. And that's the danger of the wrong goal. We can very subtly slip from trying to be good into trying to appear good. That's the danger that we want to try and escape. And it's very dangerous. It's compounded by the fact that even when I slip into this wrong way of thinking, I can still think that I'm doing a pretty good job because, look, I'm struggling. 
I'm putting in the effort and other people are approving of what I'm doing. All of those are signals that tell me you're on the right track. Whereas in fact, I may be like the fig tree or the Pharisees and the scribes whom the fig tree symbolized, and I may actually be empty inside. So the question that people often ask, who are you when no one is looking, is actually a really good question. Now, there is a form of being for others that doesn't actually suffer from this danger, because there is one other with a capital O who actually motivates me not just to appear good, but to actually be good. And the reason is that that capital O other, which is God, is actually goodness itself. So when I try to be for God, when God is the capital O other in being for others, so I'm not being for others, I'm being for God, who is the other. When I'm doing that, then I'm actually molding myself to goodness itself. So I am actually being changed inside, not just appearing to be changed. So we should strive rather than simply being for others to be for God, because God is not just a big human. He is goodness itself. And a time of isolation like the one we're going through at the moment is actually a good time to work on this spiritual project. You can, for example, think of the patterns, try to recognize the patterns of being for others that are not helpful, that are actually leading you down that road of, of, of hypocrisy and worrying more about your appearance, appearance. Try to identify them, recognize them, and then start to replace them with a different pattern that focuses more on who I really am rather than how I appear to others. So we should think of others, right? It's a good thing to summarize. Being motivated by others to do the right thing is a good thing. When the priest tells you to pray, he's doing a good thing. And when you listen to him, you're doing a good thing. The thing is, though, we shouldn't let that become an idol that we worship. We shouldn't put that in the place of the real God. We shouldn't put others and the opinions of others on the throne of the heart and that is what we bow to. That's what we need to avoid. Instead, what we have to do is use it as a step in the ladder to move from being for others to being for God. Move from worrying about how I appear to worrying more and working more on what I really am. This can be a fine line and it can be difficult to recognize. And as I keep repeating, okay, not thinking of others is actually a bad thing. Being for others has its benefits. We do need to think of others. We need to feel that empathy for others. However, I hope that we can move from simply being for others to the next step up, which is being for God. I hope that you will join me tomorrow, not because you're worried about what I'll think of you if you don't, but because you actually enjoy all of us being together and sharing these thoughts together. And anyway, I need to tell you, I won't know if you're not here. But don't tell anyone that. God bless you and goodbye. Your mercies are my God, are countless, and exceedingly plenteous by your compassions. All the raindrops I counted by you, Yeah.
returns and that his soul may live. Store us, O God, to your salvation and deal with us according to your goodness. For you are good and merciful. Let your compassion speedily come to us. Compassion upon us, O Establish for us your peace and forgive us our sins. Disperse the enemies of the church and fortify that she may not be shaken forever. Emmanuel, our God, is now in our midst with the glory of his Father and the Holy Spirit.